بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين Welcome my beautiful sisters to our weekly lesson where we learn Quran and the Sunnah of our Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. I share ayat from the Quran. I share authentic sayings of our Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam to learn our deen. Our deen, our religion is our lifestyle. Our religion is our habits. It's our goals. It's what we plan to do. It is how we think. It's how we feel. Islam teaches us what to say, when, and how. Islam teaches us about our actions, our behavior, our reaction. This is what we are learning here on a weekly basis. We are now in Ramadan, and Ramadan is the month of, inshallah, change. We want to change. We want to become better. We want to improve. Every day we learn, we grow, we get better. We reflect, we pause, and we make new plans, inshallah. We set our priorities in a way that goes with Quran and the sunnah of our Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam. Two things we are, inshallah, going to take care of. The first thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ذَلِكَ وَمَنْ يُعَظِّمْ شَعَائِرَ اللَّهِ And those or the person who glorifies the rituals of Islam. We glorify the rituals of Islam. Everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us to do, all the obligations in Islam, فَإِنَّهَا مِنْ تَقْوَى الْقُلُوبِ It is the taqwa of the heart. Taqwa is you are aware that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching over you. Allah can see you. Allah knows how you think. Allah knows what you want. Allah knows what you're doing. Allah knows what you said and why. The awareness that you're not alone. You are surrounded by angels. You are surrounded by devils. All these things around you you are aware of them and you are also aware that the angels are writing your own decisions, your own uh, choices. So we are making the right choices every day, every day, every second. The choices we make, the choices of I choose how to think, I choose how to feel, I direct my thoughts, my feelings towards goodness. I choose what to say, I choose what not to say. I choose the timing of speaking. I choose how to behave, my reaction. All these choices are written by the angels. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to judge us. He is going to ask us about our choices in the day of judgment. So this is the, the awareness of all these things around you um, are always uh, like ibadah. It is what we are created for. Allah created us to worship him. We worship him by making the right choices every day. We choose halal, we keep away from haram. And that's exactly what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the other, in the other uh, verse of Quran. So, also, we glorify the haram. Haram is big. We have to keep away from haram. Big or small, we keep away from the haram. We keep away from haram thoughts. We keep away from haram feelings. We don't envy. We do not hold grudges. We are not angry. We are not aggressive. We are the people of righteousness. We, call, we always choose righteousness we keep away from evil. We keep away from evil thoughts. We keep away from evil uh, feelings. We don't envy. We're not jealous. We don't say nasty things. We choose our words. We choose the good words all the time. We choose the good behavior. That's who we are. So we always do rituals of Islam by praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We wear the proper hijab as women. 
we fast and we fast properly. We fast from looking at haram. We fast from listening to haram. We fast from speaking haram. We fast from the haram behavior. All these things, we are aware of them. You are aware of who you are. You are aware of where you are going. We are going uh, to Akhirah. And we want to be with our Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. Our goal is to go to the highest level of Jannah. We do not want to be judged in the day of judgment. Our goal is to take our books that are written by the angels in the right hand. Our goal is to be with our Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam in the day of judgment and to walk with him, inshallah, to the highest level of Jannah. We want our hasanat, good deeds, to be heavier than the bad deeds in the scale. And the challenge is not making hasanat only. The challenge is to keep the hasanat because we can lose this hasanat easily. Now I am going to share with you all these ahadith sayings of the Prophet والسلام, as a proof to what we need to decide. If you want to decide who you are, you want to decide what you want, you want to decide how to behave, what to speak, what to think, what to feel, I'm going to share with you these ahadith, inshallah. So first, as a believer, we have to make, inshallah, a lot of good deeds. Ramadan is very good for us to make lots and lots of hasanat, inshallah. And uh, um, the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, said, Two words, they are beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they are very heavy in the scale of hasanat. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanallah al -azim. So now maybe you can start saying them every day. Every day, say it at least 100 times. Sit down and say subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanallah al -azim, over and over and over. While you are cleaning, while you are doing the laundry, while you are washing the dishes, or while you are cooking, while you are driving, keep remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make lots and lots of hasanat. Do not think, my beautiful sisters. When you think, you will be tired. You will be drained emotionally, mentally, and physically. We plan, yes. We think, yes, but we don't overthink. Thinking without, um, without a benefit, I think to plan, I think to reflect, but thinking, 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 and thinking about the negative things will make us drained. Instead of thinking, say, A'udhu Billahi min shaitan rajim and start remembering Allah. Make lots and lots of dua. Dua, a lot of dua, inshallah. Dua is ibadah. We worship Allah when we make dua. You can recite Surah Al-Ikhlas over and over and over because the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said that Surah Al-Ikhlas is third of the Quran. So if you, uh, if Quran is 604 pages, if you recited Surah Al-Ikhlas sincerely with love, then you will have the reward of reciting 200 pages of the Quran. Yes. We want easy way of having um, hasanat, inshallah. So recite Surah Al-Ikhlas. Recite it over and over and over. Every three times, it, it, you will get the reward of reciting the whole Quran. Yes, it will be good if we recite it, inshallah, and we will have um, millions and billions of hasanat in this blessed Ramadan. Another part where a Muslim is always aware of what they do is the behavior. And that's what I want to be talking about today. A believer is not only a believer who prays and fasts by leaving haram, like by leaving. Um, some people think like, oh, I don't do any haram because they don't take drugs or they don't drink alcohol. They think, oh, I am a perfect believer. No, haram sometimes can be in our behavior. Sometimes it can be a word, 
I can sometimes say a word and it can be billions of um, maybe say yeah. it can be um, maybe heavy in the scale of things in the day of judgment. So we do not want to uh, make any mistakes, inshallah. In Ramadan, we want to keep our hasanat. We do not want to lose them and we're going to be aware of what we are doing. One of our goals is to be from as siddiqin because those who go to Al-Firdaus Al-A'la are um, prophets, messengers, martyrs, and as siddiqin These are the kind of people who enter Al-Firdaus Al-A'la. Subhanallah. Who is as siddiq The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam says, Inna as-sidqa yahdi ila al-bir. Honesty, telling the truth, to be an honest person, it leads to righteousness. وَإِنَّ الْبِرَّ يَهْدِي إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ Righteousness leads to Jannah. وَإِنَّ الرَّجُلَ لَيَصْدُقُوا And a man and a woman actually can tell the truth and decide to be honest حَتَّى يُكْتَبَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ صَدِّيقًا until they are written, they are from as siddiqin We want to be righteous. as siddiq is the righteous person. We want to be righteous people. So first, we have to be honest. We have to be honest with ourselves. We have to be honest with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to be honest with people around us. Even, even with animals, subhanallah. Al-Bukhari, when he was going to collect the authentic ahadith said by the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, and he was traveling from one place to another to collect these ahadith. Every time he hears about someone who knows a saying, he will travel to see and he will investigate. He did not take hadith from anybody except from the honest people, from trustworthy people. So one of the travels, he asked about a man and they said to him, that's the person. He was walking towards him and he saw him with his horse. He wanted his horse to come to him. The horse is distracted. He wanted the horse to come to him and he just, he did this to the horse with his hand, he pointed with his hand as if he has something in his hand. So the horse assumed that, oh, maybe he has sugar or something to feed me. So the horse comes to him and he grabs the horse when he comes closer to him. And he didn't have anything in his hand. So Al-Bukhari turned his back and started walking away. So a guy asked him, um, why are you walking away? The man is there. Don't you want to go and ask him about the saying of the Prophet He said to him, I don't take, I don't take hadith from someone who lies. He's a liar. He just lied to the horse. He lied to the horse. He didn't lie to a human being. But he turned his back and started walking away from him. He just lied in front of me. I cannot trust this guy. We think that, ah, oh, it's okay to lie to an animal. If a person is used to lying, it, it became so easy to them. Then they will be lying to animals. An honest person doesn't lie even to animals. The Prophet والسلام, was once talking in the masjid or I don't know where, but he saw because women used to, when, when he did Salatul Jumu'ah, women used to sit in the back and prayed behind men. So the Prophet saw a lady. She had a baby or like a child who was like moving away from her. And she said to the baby, like, come, come. And she had something in her hand and she was telling the baby to come. So the baby went to her. And when, when he came to her, she opened her hand and she had a one date in her hand and she gave it to the child. It's a child. Sometimes we think it's a child. He doesn't know. 
It doesn't matter. But I know if the child doesn't know that I'm lying, I know that I am lying. I am an adult. When the Prophet والسلام, saw her, he said to her, you know, if you didn't have anything in your hand, if the child came and you opened your hand and you had nothing, the angel would write it for you as sin. It would be a lie. Yes, he is a baby. He is a child. He doesn't understand. But you know, you know it's a lie. So it will be written because you are an adult and the adult, when, when we do things, we have to be careful. So now, subhanAllah, imagine how many Muslims lie today. Are all Muslims reliable? Are all Muslims trustworthy today? Unfortunately not. Sometimes children do not trust their own parents. They know my mom speaks, but she, does, she never does it. My dad speaks, but he doesn't care. Why would we be a wrong role model to our children if we want to be good role model? Now, not Muslims around us. If a non-Muslim sees you lying or having a bad behavior or acting aggressively, what are they going to think? Straight away, they will judge Islam. They will say, this is Islam. I don't want Islam if this is Islam. Even young Muslims. Now we are facing a wave of atheism. People are turning to, to become atheists. Because when they don't see role models, when the role models are not trustworthy or not reliable when they are not honest on the other hand they are harsh and controlling what do you think the young muslims will start thinking they will start thinking if this is islam i don't want it sometimes we can be the reason for young muslims to hate islam because they misunderstand islam they think islam is harsh Islam is so restricting. I'm suffocating because of Islam. When it is not Islam, it is the adults. We have to be careful the way we speak with young people. So if I want to be righteousness, if I want to go to the highest level of Jannah, then I have to be honest. I have to be honest with children. I have to be honest with Muslims and non-Muslims. I have to be honest with everyone. When I am honest, then my children will be honest. If, if adults lie, children will learn to lie. That's subhanAllah. It's, yani, this is how the, the situation gets. And, and now look at Muslims now. You cannot even trust them with a, a secret. You cannot trust them with news. They change the news. They exaggerate. They, 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 they say things without thinking. That's why the Prophet والسلام, said, الْكَذِبَ Lying leads to al-fujur. Al-fujur is wickedness. Al-fujur is when the person is far away from obedience to Allah. Al-fajr is a person who doesn't obey Allah. Al-fajr is the person who chooses evil, who chooses haram. Al-fajr is the person who chooses the bad behavior, bad thoughts, evil feelings, and, uh, and they overreact with their aggressiveness. That's Al-Fajr. We are not from Ahlul Fujur. We're not from the people of evilness. We're not the people of uh, Haram. وَإِنَّ الْفُجُورَ يَهْدِي إِلَى النَّارِ Al-Fujur, wickedness and evilness, it leads to Jahannam, to the fire, to hellfire. 
وإن الرجل لا يكذب If a person chooses to lie حتى يكتب عند الله كذابة He will be written كذاب A liar You get to choose What do you want to be written? How do you want the angels to call you? Do you want the angels to call you the righteousness, a صديق, صديقة for the female, or the liar? Angels know us from our characteristics. If I lie, angels will say she's the liar. If I am honest, they will say the honest person. They call us, they make dua for us, they... Um, that they call us, sorry, they, uh, they, they hear our dua, they hear our ibadah, and they say, she's the honest person. And they will make dua for us as well. So we have to choose every single day. We don't lie. We don't lie to the government. We don't lie at work. You don't go to the doctor asking certificate for being sick if you are not sick. You don't lie. Even if they will deduct from your uh, salary. Do not lie because of money. وإن, subhanallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in, in Quran. Uh, uh, I forgot the ayah. <laughs> yes, I just remembered it. وَتَأْكُلُونَ رِزْقَكُمْ أَنَّكُمْ تُكَذِّبُونَ If rizq. If I get risk, money, or something because of lying, that's haram. Then I am a liar. We have to be careful. We never lie, not to get a benefit from anybody. That's not who we are. Also, a Muslim doesn't cheat. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, "Woman ghashana falaysa minna." Whoever cheats is not from us, us, the Muslims, us, the believers. If I want to be amongst the believers, if I want to be from the righteous people, I shouldn't cheat. Cheating is haram. Whether it is cheating in um, buying and selling, some people, when they want to sell something, they don't tell the truth about what they are selling. They don't speak the truth about the product they are uh, advertising for. We can lie by advertising falsely about a product. We can lie to people and, and, and because we want money. And that is when it comes to selling and buying, when it comes to work, we shouldn't cheat. No one is allowed to cheat. The Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, so a man, he was, uh, he was uh, selling food and when he looked at the, uh, he, he put his hand inside the food, like it is something like, like you can take a handful of it. It can be wheat, it can be whatever. He put his hand and then he found that the parts from down are some, some of them are wet. So from up, it is dry. From down, it is wet. So the Prophet والسلام, said to him, what is this? Why is this wet from down, dry from up? He said, Ya Rasulullah, it rained and it became wet. So he said to him, why don't you show the wet ones to people? Why are you hiding the wet, showing the dry? Because he's hiding it. He said to him, Man ghasha, whoever cheats, falaysa minni. And he's not from me. He's not my follower. You know, some people think that, oh, the, the food, whatever it was, like it was just dry. It wasn't, it wasn't rotten. It wasn't damaged. It was only dry from rain but because he hid the wet ones and he put dry ones above them 
then the Prophet ﷺ considered that as cheating. He said to him, why are you hiding the wet ones? Whoever cheats is not from me, is not my, my follower. If I want to stand up with my Prophet ﷺ in the day of judgment, if I want to walk with him over the bridge of Jahannam to go to the highest level of Jannah, if I want to see the Prophet والسلام, knocking the door of Jannah, hearing Ridwan, peace be upon him, saying, who is it? And then I want to hear my Prophet والسلام, saying, it is me, Muhammad. And I want to hear Ridwan saying, I was ordered not to open the gate of Jannah except for you. And then he opens the door and he says, Assalamu alaikum to us. And then the angels will come to say, Salamun alaykum tibatum. Peace be upon you. You chose goodness. When you choose goodness, you choose honesty. You choose to be a reliable person, a trustworthy person. You do not cheat. You do not lie. If your goal is to be with the Prophet والسلام, when he opens the gate of Jannah, you have to control your tongue. Yes, we're not scared of poverty. Oh, because of money? We will not cheat because of money. We will not lie because of money. The Prophet والسلام, said, عليكم, Wallah, I'm not scared that you will be poor in the future. Poverty is not what I'm worried about. What, I'm, what I am worried about that you become slaves of this dunya and you will be competing in, in this dunya. He said, Tanafasuha means compete in dunya and showing off and money and luxury and became slaves for money. It will, it will destroy you. This dunya will destroy you as it destroyed people of luxury before you. We're not slaves of money. A slave of money lies to get money. They cheat because of money. They use other people to have more money. We don't do that. We Muslims, we do not lie. We do not cheat. We do not use anybody for the sake of money. We don't do that. So this is who we are. And we have to know what we are doing in this world. I am a Muslim means I am a trustworthy. I am an honest person. I do not cheat and I do not betray. Betrayal is one of the characteristics of people who commit sins. They are not obeying Allah. People of hellfire, they betray. We do not betray. The Prophet والسلام, told us in the day of judgment, Every person who betrayed will be holding a flag with his betrayal. So you're going to be holding a flag with all the betrayals that you have done in your life. Imagine everybody will look at you. She betrayed her sister. She betrayed her whoever it is. If I betray someone, then I will be holding a flag with the betrayal that I did. How many flags? Some people will be carrying millions of flags because they betray everyone. Yes, they show people that they are trustworthy and then they betray them. Every person who betray will hold his betrayal as a flag in the day of judgment. Everyone will look at the person and they will know, mm, this is when she betrayed her sister. This is when she betrayed her husband. This is when she betrayed her neighbor, her daughter, whoever. Every, every time we betrayed someone. So this is how we will come in the day of judgment. Whatever we do today, we think we are clever. Some people think, oh, I'm clever, I'm smart, because they cheat and no one knows I'm so smart. 
No one knows. I betray people secretly. No, everyone knows. Wallahi. Everyone knows. People know the liars. People know the cheaters. People know the betrayals, but they don't know that everybody knows. They think they are clever. Allah knows. The angels are writing. And they will come in the day of judgment in front of all humanity. Look what I did. Look, I chose to cheat. I chose to betray. I chose to lie. For what? For money, for fame, for uh, whatever the reason is. For dunya, for life, for worldly things. Only superficial people would do this. Materialistic people, they will lie for money. A trustworthy person will not lie. I prefer to be hungry than lying or cheating or betraying someone. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam says in this hadith Qudusi. Al-hadith al-Qudusi is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says something. So the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, this is what Allah said. We call this Hadith Qudusi. Three people. I will be fighting with them in the day of judgment. I am their enemy. Imagine when you declare like when you declare wickedness or evilness to the point where Allah becomes your enemy in the day of judgment. I will be, the difference is with me in the day of judgment. Number one, رَجُلٌ أَعْطَى بِي ثُمَّ غَدَر A person gave a word either by saying, for the sake of Allah, do this. And then someone does something like you ask for someone to do something for you. You give them a word. You promise to them or you, um, and then subhanallah, and in the end you betray them. So if I promise someone and I say to them, wallahi, for the sake of Allah, do this for me and I will do this for you. Because they said for the sake of Allah, you agreed. If they betray for the sake of Allah, if they betray saying something a promise or they gave a word and they because because they said for the sake of allah or it could it could be maybe they said wallahi and then they betrayed and they lied and they cheat subhanallah allah is their enemy in the day of judgment a person who kidnapped a free person sold him as a slave Alhamdulillah, we don't do that. But then number three, we can be number three. وَرَجُلٌ إِسْتَأْجَرَ أَجِيرًا فَاسْتَوْفَى مِنْهُ وَلَمْ يُعْطِهِ أَجْرَهُ You ask someone to do something for you as a favor. For example, it can be someone, a cleaner. You ask a cleaner to come and clean for you. They clean, but you don't give them their wages you ask someone to teach they teach but you don't give them their wages you know how many people now ask others to do something for them as a work can you please teach me and i will teach uh, i will pay you this you teach them and then they don't pay you can you clean for me can you work for me can you help me can you be uh, whatever work is if you asked someone to work for you something and you promised them with a certain amount of money if you don't pay them what they deserve Allah is your enemy in the day of judgment some people think it is so clever oh I am smart I can lie and use the person to do me something. And if they don't ask me, you know, some people think, oh, 
keep asking me and I will give you. If you don't keep asking me, then means you don't want it. That is not true. People have, you know, everything is expensive. If you are a boss at work, if you have someone that works for you and you, you, they are working for you knowing that you will give them wages, you will give them money. And if you don't give them money, someone fixes something. Oh, can you come and fix for me the, uh, the, the, the tap, the door, the window, whatever. And then they come and they fix it. And you don't pay them. Or if you pay them less than you should be paying them, Allah will be your enemy. If you don't have money, tell them. Say to them, I don't have money. Can you come and fix for me this? Can you come and build for me this? Can you come and take me here or there? Do not use people, especially the labor, you know, so people who, who like cleaners, they, uh, they come fixing things in the houses, a gardener, and, and then you don't give them their money. Allah will be your enemy in the day of judgment. That's very, very, very dangerous. We Muslims, we are reliable. We are trustworthy people. You say to someone, if you do this, I'll give you $10. This person can be your son. Unfortunately, some people think that, oh, he's my son, doesn't matter. If you said to your son, clean my car and I'll give you $20. He cleans the car and he doesn't ask for the money. You think it's halal for you to keep it? No, you gave them your word. He cleans the car because you promised him to give him the $20. You go to him and say to him, here, this is the $20. If your son or your daughter said, oh, it's okay, mom, I don't want it. I want to clean your car for free. Are you sure? Jazakallahu khairan. Thank you, honey. I really appreciate it. Thank them. But you don't say to them, do this for me. I'll give you $10. And when they do it, you just forget. Yalla, don't worry. Yalla, he's my son. Yalla, she's my daughter. What are we teaching our children? That's, that's betrayal. It's a betrayal. You said something and you did the opposite. That's a betrayal. You promised your son to give him something. You promised your daughter to take her somewhere. Finish your homework. I'll take you to the park. She finishes the homework. Ready to go to the park? Tomorrow. Later. I'm busy. But you said. Uh, yeah, I said, but I changed my mind. You cannot change your mind. You cannot change your mind. That's a betrayal. She will never believe you. And every time you say something, she will be like, hmm, is that really? Are you going to really do it? In her brain, she will think, I doubt it. I don't think so. We have to be trustworthy. We do not betray. We do not cheat. We do not lie. When we promise, we fulfill our promises. That's who we are. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls the hypocrites. Hypocrites are people who go to hellfire forever. You cannot call a Muslim a hypocrite. A hypocrite is not. A, if someone says something, do something or whatever, like they, they lie, they... We call them a two-faced person, a person with two faces, a two-faced person. But we don't call a Muslim a hypocrite because hypocrites, Allah says, Hypocrites, they go to the lowest level of Jahannam and they stay there forever. They don't leave. Hypocrites are not Muslims. They have no supporter. 
no one will support them in the day of judgment to Jahannam, the lowest level of Jahannam. Munafiqeen, they have some characteristics. They have some qualities, al-munafiqeen. Now, al-munafiqeen are non-Muslims because they show they are Muslims, but they hate Islam in their hearts. They don't love Islam. They wish Islam doesn't exist. So, but they have some qualities. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam says four, four characteristics. If a person has four, all of them, all of them, then he is a munafiq. A munafiq, a person with, with four things. من كانت فيه خصلة منهن كان فيه خصلة من النفاق حتى يدعها. If the if a Muslim has one of these characteristics, then he is closer to hypocrites until he leaves that characteristic. So these traits we have to keep away from them. If you want to be away from hypocrites, I don't want to be close to the hypocrites. I want to be away from them. I want to go to the highest level of Jannah. I want to be with my prophet. I don't want to be close to them. It is lying. Hypocrites, they lie. Hypocrites, when they promise, they do not fulfill their promises. Hypocrites, when they make a pledge or a contract or a, um, uh, a deal, they break it. They do not follow the contract. Contracts like marriage contract. Marriage contract is very, it's, it's like buying and selling contracts. Uh, a contract for living in a house, a contract with real estate. Whatever you accept and you agree, there are conditions in this contract, if you accept, it's a pledge. It's a ahd. Yes. You agreed on these conditions. You, you stick to them. That's a Muslim. Yeah, you have to be careful. Read the conditions. I accept. And you have to accept them and follow them. Not you do the opposite. Have to be careful. Yeah, how many Muslims now, they accept with a company for electricity or a company for water or a company for internet or whatever, and they have conditions, they sign, I will pay, I will do, and then they don't pay, they manipulate, they cheat. Why? Why would a Muslim do something like that? We make contracts and we don't follow them. We promise we don't fulfill our promises. We lie. What for? Dunya. Dunya. Most of people who lie, cheat, betray, they don't follow any contracts because of dunya, because of worldly dunya, because of life. وَإِذَا خَاصَمَ فَجَرْ خَاصَمَ means if he disagree with someone and if they fight with someone فَجَرْ الفاجر, a person who doesn't they are when they fight with people when they disagree with people they become angry they become aggressive they would swear they yell, they interrupt people talking, they can't calm down and listen, they can't disagree calmly. No, they become aggressive. Aggressive people are closer to hypocrites in the day of judgment. A Muslim is not an aggressive person. You can disagree with others. Others have different religions. I don't care. That's your religion. This is my religion. Wherever I go, I will pray. People will mock me. I don't care. I am a Muslim. 
I need to pray. They will say to me, why do you want to pray? Why do I'm not going to become aggressive. If I become aggressive, if I become angry, what's the use? What's the use? You're a believer. You're a believer. They will say to you, don't do this. Why are you doing this? Blah, blah, blah. Let them talk. Let them talk. You say to them, you choose for yourself. I choose for myself. That's it. We don't argue. We don't say nasty things. We don't hurt people's feelings. We don't say bad things. We don't accuse, criticize, and put down. Yeah, when they disagree, they can't disagree peacefully. They fight. They are aggressive. They are violent. A Muslim can't be violent. A Muslim cannot be aggressive. A Muslim doesn't say nasty things. That's who we are. All right? The Prophet ﷺ said, لا يزال الناس بخير. People are on the safe side. They are good. ما لم يتحاسدوا. As long as they don't envy and get jealous. So I am good as long as I don't envy, as long as I am not jealous of others. That's what our Prophet is telling us. So we do not envy, we don't get jealous because jealousy causes hatred, causes grudges, causes nasty things. Because of jealousy, because of um, envying others, people backbite. It's the reason for backbiting. It is the reason why people gossip. Namima. Gossiping. Lying sometimes can be because of envying and, and being jealous. When a jealous person sees others having things, they feel like, oh, I need to show off as well. So, yalla, let me let me lie. And I have this and I bought this and I went here, I went there. Why are you shy? You say, I can't afford it. It's not a big deal. Oh, people will judge me. Let them judge you. They, they have angels to write for them. We shouldn't be, you know, um, showing off. Jealousy becomes... Subhanallah, part of it because of when a person wants to um, show off, it's all, you know, it brings jealousy and it brings all these grudges. The Prophet والسلام, was with the companions once in the masjid and he said to them, a man from the people of heaven will come now, will enter. And they were all looking at the gate of the masjid, who's going to come now? Waiting, waiting. And then a man from Al-Ansar, the people who lived in Medina, so he is from Al-Medina, because people of Mecca who migrated to Medina, they are called Al-Muhajirin. They, they migrated to Medina. But people who lived in Medina and received Al-Muhajirin, they are Al-Ansar, all right? So he was from the people of Medina, who was originally living there. He entered the mosque. It looked that he made wudu because he was dripping water. Um, his, his beard was dripping water. His face was wet. And, and he was like, an, he entered. And then the next day, the Prophet والسلام, said the same thing. A man from the people of heaven will enter, enter the mosque now. The same man enters again. The next day, third day, the same man enters. Yani three times, the same man enters after the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a man from the people of Jannah will enter now. So when he enters, um, they all got curious. But most of them was Abdullah bin Amr ibn al-As. Abdullah bin Amr ibn al-As, Sahabi, young man. 
he followed the man to his house and asked him to stay with him. He said to him, I have some problems. I need to stay somewhere. Can I stay with you, uncle? He said to him, sure. He stays with him for three nights watching him. Why is he from the people of Jannah? What is it so special about him? What is he doing that we're not doing? So he was, he looked, he was watching him day and night. And he noticed that all he does is remembering Allah. And that's it. He said, I didn't see anything like he wasn't praying Qiyamul Layl more than us or fasting or reciting whole Quran. He said, all I noticed that he spoke less. That was his observation. After he observed him, he said, I noticed two things. He didn't speak a lot. He's not a huge fan of speaking. Doesn't speak a lot. And all he does, he just remembers Allah. But a lot of Sahaba have this quality as well. A lot of Sahaba remember Allah day and night. A lot of Sahaba do not speak a lot. So what is it about him? So he couldn't tell anything. So he had to ask the man. Uncle, I need to know from you. We were sitting with the prophet and he said a man from, the, uh, from, from Jannah will enter. And you entered three days, it was you. What is it so special? Can you please tell me what is it so special that you're doing that we're not doing? So the man thought, Wallahi, I, I don't know. There isn't anything that I am I'm doing. Like there's nothing. He said to him, please think. Focus with me here. So the man said to him, I do what you saw. I pray the five prayers. I remember Allah. I, I don't know. But maybe because I don't envy anyone. I don't have jealousy against anyone. When I go to bed, I go to my bed with no grudges whatsoever against anyone. I have no grudges against anyone. So that's what he said to him. He said, Ma huwa illa ma ra'ayt. What you saw is me. There's nothing else I do. غَيْرَ أَنِّي لَا أَجِدُ فِي نَفْسِي لِأَحَدٍ مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ غُشًّا وَلَا أَحْسِدُ أَحَدًا I don't, I don't feel jealous. I don't envy anyone. I don't have grudges against anyone. And then the, the Sahabi Abdullah said to him, this is that trait, the characteristic that puts you this high rank. It is what we can't do. It's the clean heart, the sound heart. You cleanse your heart from grudges, from envy. When you do not, you don't hate anyone, subhanAllah. But it doesn't mean that you allow others to put you down and use you. No, you're a good Muslim. You don't do anything wrong to others. But you set the boundaries as well. You set the boundaries. You keep away from toxic people. You don't allow anyone to use you. Don't put burden on yourself. It doesn't mean a good person doesn't mean a person who overserves others and surrenders to them, submits to people, pleases people blindly. No, that's not. A believer, a believer is a person who does not, you know, the, we do not overwhelm ourselves, but we have to, inshallah, set the boundaries in the right ways. Okay? So that's how our Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, described a um, uh, righteous people. The Prophet والسلام, was asked about a lady. A man asked the Prophet about a lady he knows. He said, Ya Rasulullah, this woman, she prays Qiyamul Layl. She prays Qiyamul Layl at night and she fasts 
the extra fasting, not only Ramadan, she fasts nafila extra. But she says bad things to her neighbors. To idhijiranaha. She hurts her neighbors. Maybe she gossips, maybe she backbites, maybe she lies, maybe she cheats, maybe she's using them. She's hurting her neighbors. The Prophet والسلام, said, La khayra fiha. She's not a good person. She's not a good Muslim. She will go to hellfire. Of course, if she doesn't repent. If, if she doesn't change her behavior, if she doesn't um, if she doesn't repent, ask Allah for forgiveness, if she doesn't stop whatever she's doing, and she doesn't, if she apologizes to them, then inshallah, she will go to Jannah. So this is, this is Islam. Islam is not only praying and fasting, and then we go and we do nasty things. No, we pray, yes. We fast, yes, but we fast from haram. We fast from the false talking. We fast from the false actions. We fast from the false behavior. We do not overreact. We, we always fulfill our promises. If you made a contract, you have to fulfill it and do it right. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, um, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَوْفُوا بِالْعُقُودِ O you who believe, fulfill your contracts. You signed and agreed on a contract, you have to fulfill it. You do it. You don't betray. You made an appointment with someone. Stick to it. Don't forget. Don't make appointments and leave people waiting for you. And you don't even show up. You don't even call them to say, I'm sorry, I can't come. You know how many Muslims make appointments? They don't even call and say, I'm sorry, I can't come. People will be waiting for them. Even if you make an appointment in a clinic, in a company, wherever, you made an appointment with someone. If you can't go, call, send a message, apologize. Apologize, the least thing you can do. I'm sorry I can't come. I'm sorry I couldn't come. If something, an emergency happened, call them and say, I couldn't come. I had an accident. This happened. This. Apologize. It is not right to give people words and then you just forget. No, you have to be trustworthy. We are honest people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, lima taquluna ma la tafaloon. Oh, you who believe, why do you do the opposite of what you're saying? Kabura maqtan inda Allahi an taqulu ma la tafaloon. It is so great and big wrong Allah hates it you say something and you do the opposite you say I am a believer I am honest and then you go and you lie never lie we are not liars we're not cheaters we do not betray and also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran wa the contract, a promise, fulfill it. It is a responsibility. Your responsibility is to fulfill your promise. Your responsibility is to be trustworthy. You give a word, you do it. That's who we are. Subhanallah. So whatever contract it was, whether it is marriage contract, whether it is work contract, you have a contract for a job, you fulfill it, you do your job properly. It says to you, come this time, leave this time, stick to the timing. 
you have to do this and this. You do it. You accept it. You do it. That's it's a responsibility. You signed, you agreed on a contract, whatever it is, then you have to fulfill it. Don't say, yeah, 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 and then you do the opposite. It is haram. The Prophet والسلام, told us about those who lie, those who uh, they do not fulfill their promises, and they do not, if they have any trust or contract, they don't fulfill it. The Prophet والسلام, said, they will be, a, a, a Muslim who does this will be closer to the hypocrites in the day of judgment. Like the, the part which I didn't say is, وَإِنْ صَامَ وَصَلَّى وَزَعَمَ أَنَّهُ مُسْلِمُ Even if this Muslim prays and fasts and claims to be a Muslim. Allahu Akbar. Even if I claim I am a Muslim, I fast and I pray. But if I lie, if I cheat, if I betray, then I will be closer to the hypocrites in the day of judgment. And I will be judged. We do not want to be judged in the day of judgment. We do not want to stay for a long time. We want to stay for a few minutes only. I want to stay for a few minutes only in the day of judgment. I want my face to have light in the day of judgment. I don't want to have dust on my face. I want to be laughing. وَجُوهُ يَوْمَ إِذِ مُسْفِرَةٌ ضَاحِكَةٌ مُسْتَبِشِرَةٌ Faces will be happy, smiling. That's what we want in the day of judgment. We don't want to be scared. We do not want to be regretting anything. So we have to think today. What are the wrong things that I'm doing here? We have to change it. We have to get better day after day after day. The Prophet ﷺ said, Inna min khiyarikum ahasinikum akhlaqa. The best amongst you is the best of their manners. If I have manners, then I am a best Muslimah. Then you have to pray, fast, wear the proper hijab. But we have to have the good manners. We have to keep away from haram. We have to keep away from evilness. We have to keep away from the bad things. We always choose goodness, we always choose halal, we always choose righteousness. We want to be from as siddiqeen to go to the highest level of Jannah, inshallah. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this Ramadan easy for us. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us his blessings. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept all our good deeds to teach us Quran, to teach us Islam, to make us the best Muslims with our behavior, with our words, with our hearts. With And, and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to purify our hearts, to purify our senses from haram, to keep haram away from us, and to keep us away from haram wherever it is. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين جزاكم الله خيرا والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته